Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all doing really, really well. I'm in an alleyway. It's March. It's already almost a quarter of the way through 2018 and I hope you're having a great weekend. So topic of this video, I just wanted to hang out and talk about something that not many people talk about and that's going to be hard, tough, difficult times with software development. A lot of people are a little infatuated. They think it's very glamorous, so sexy from the outside, but actually there's a lot of tough parts and not many people talk about that. So in this video, I have three, my top three difficult, tough parts of software development. It's going to be technical debt, dealing with other people's egos and staying motivated. All right, three different points. We're just going to talk through them. Let's do it. All right, let's kick off the video. First thing to talk about, first tough part of software development is dealing with technical debt. You might have an inclination of what technical debt really means, but by the time we're done talking about all these examples, you should have a really good feeling of why it's so difficult to manage sometimes. So I have five, these are my top five root causes of how technical debt is generated. There's probably 50, hundreds, thousands of ways these could happen, but these are my top five. So first one, first one is pretty easy. This is just going to be tight, tight deadline. So this is your boss coming into your cubicle saying, hey, you need the feature done by today or by this week or by this month. And based on the deadline, you're probably going to take some shortcuts, introduce some hacks and do some things really quick that you wouldn't do if you had more time. So tight, tight deadlines is the first most common cause of technical debt. Second, second most common cause of technical debt is going to be developer churn. Remember that a code base always lives much longer than a developer does. For one given code base, there's probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of developers, many who don't even work in the company anymore that have contributed to that code base. So pretend you just jump into some code. I bet somebody had created it five years ago, they're not at the company anymore. Maybe you work on it for two years and then you leave the company, someone else takes it on. Think about the code base for Twitter. Think about how many different ex Twitter employees have worked on it. So. The reason why this causes a lot of tech debt is that there's constantly churn, different implementations, not consistent patterns, tons of people touching the same exact system. So obviously there's gonna be some problems. Third, third major cause of technical debt is gonna be business requirement changes. This happened to me a lot at my old company in California, but there was one project we worked on for two months, wrote a lot of code, and right when we were just testing, everybody was getting together to test this project, they just canceled it. Somebody, some executive sitting in a chair somewhere just canceled it. So this is another cause of technical debt because many times you might work very hard, develop a lot of code, change the system to meet this business requirement. And then all of a sudden a business requirement changes and there's not much you can do about it. And then you have all this stale stuff sitting. Fourth, fourth cause of technical debt is gonna be something that you can't really control, but this is when other libraries become deprecated. And sometimes you can't really control this, right? Right now, React is the hot thing, but you don't know in five years if React is still gonna be the hot thing. And 10 years or five years ago, React definitely wasn't even relevant. So I have a good example of this in my current company, but when the product was first implemented, they used this cool front-end framework from Yahoo called YUI. But obviously we know Yahoo's status, right? Yahoo is irrelevant anymore, but obviously there's still all this code that uses Yahoo libraries that nobody can even touch anymore. Yahoo doesn't even touch that code. So many times technical debt is created when it's beyond your control. Something that you're using just dies and then it's just sitting there. So it sucks. All right, this is the fifth, fifth and last point about how technical debt is generated. This is unfortunate, but very true. This is just from bad coders, all right? So obviously when I was an intern, I was working on some features and I wrote some pretty terrible code back then. I don't know if any, any of it is still active, but if the features and code I wrote as an intern, I know that code was bad. I know it was all bad, but that's probably technical debt for someone else to clean up. So at different stages in your career, or even right now, you're gonna be working alongside some bad coders. Maybe right now you are the bad coder and you're creating all this technical debt. But remember, all different coders are at different levels and you can't just have some guru implementing everything, right? There's gonna be some beginners doing some of the work and those beginners aren't gonna do as good of a job as somebody more senior. So I know I created a lot of technical debt when I was first starting and now it's probably someone else's problem. All right, that's more than enough information about technical debt. Sometimes it's very hard to manage. It's a headache, it can cost the business money, it can cause you sleep sometimes. It's just 
painful. You can like bang your head on a desk, but that's a tough part of software development that people don't realize. People think you can just go in there and code away and make all this new amazing things, but very often you're just dealing with this debt that's accumulated over many, many years and you just gotta deal with it. All right, so let's move away from the technical part a little bit and start talking about dealing with other people's egos. I think this is particularly relevant for software just because the nature of the work is very subjective, right? There's a million ways to do a single thing. So a lot of people that aren't coding 24 hours a day or they're just looking at it from the outside, they don't really realize how subjective software development is. It isn't just like a to-do list of 10 things and once you're done the 10 things, you get done. You're done with your day, right? It's very, very subjective, a thousand ways to do one thing. And that's across the whole spectrum from the language you choose to the frameworks you like. People are like, Java stinks, Ruby's the best, or Java's the only way to go. I love React, and then other people hate React. You know, it's so many, so many different opinions. It's just subjective. And what that lends itself towards is just a ton of opinions. So a major part of software development is you just gotta deal with tons of different opinions from different people. And some people are gonna be a little more aggressive with their opinions. And this is highly, highly underestimated. A lot of people think software developer is a simple job in terms of dealing with people, but actually the toughest part of it is just dealing with all these different egos and you know angry developers. Last part, last part I wanna talk about with software is staying motivated. So this is like a cookie cutter thing I could say about any job, but even if you think writing software, developing code is super, super sexy, if you're not motivated about the work, it's irrelevant, right? So one really good example I have is a lot of my friends that work at agencies experience demotivation very quickly because at different agencies, their contracts are one year or two years so they're jumping from project to project to project very very quickly just half a year maybe sometimes but they're always jumping from project to project and they're in different code bases all the time so they don't have much attachment to their work it's not their work they're just producing something for a client and then a different client so we can make a laundry list of how you would be demotivated but it happens very very often right software is just like any other job it's not just fairy tale coding. You could be demotivated because your boss is a terrible person, your team is bad, you're not making enough money, your company's doing terrible, the product's terrible, but there's so many reasons you could potentially become demotivated and it's going to happen. So you can't just think of software as a super sexy thing because you can write software itself. You're naturally going to become demotivated by external factors. All right, I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys, but there's a lot of difficult, tough parts with software development. I think the way it's advertised is that it's super, super sexy, super, super fun, and writing code is amazing. You make a ton of money, but there's a lot of difficult parts with it. So there, I could list 10, but these are my top three. So let's just recap them real quick. Remember, technical debt always accumulates. Every single code base, every single company has technical debt, and sometimes it gets so bad, you bang your head on a wall. Second, you gotta deal with a ton of egos because software is so subjective, right? Everybody loves different things. You gotta deal with some angry people. Third and finally is staying motivated. Software development is just like any other job and you will become demotivated at times and there won't be anything you can do about it. So just remember these things are pretty standard things, but for some reason, not many people talk about the hard parts of it. They just talk about, they try to sell it to you. They try to tell you how awesome it is to be a developer but often you know developers don't like their jobs too so hope this video was helpful please ask me any questions give me a like give me a thumbs up share the video and i'll catch everyone next time all right take it easy